Congress has been able to avoid another government shutdown. The House approved a short-term spending bill this week to keep the government funded one day before a partial shutdown deadline. Joining me now is congressional reporter with The Hill, Michael Schnell. Michael, welcome back. Let's, let's get right to it. Nearly a week ago, we were talking about what it would take for Republicans, House Republicans, to approve a budget to avoid a shutdown. Well, that seems to be true. What happened? How did this all come together? Yeah, Mark, essentially what happened was over the weekend, last weekend on Sunday, congressional leaders unveiled a two-step stopgap bill, like another continuing resolution to keep the government funded into March. They unveiled that on Sunday. And look, it was then a race to sell it to their conference, leaders of all the four corners to sell it to their conferences and try to wrangle enough votes to get this thing over the finish line. Ultimately, that ended up happening on Thursday, both the Senate and the House passing this continuing resolution with overwhelming bipartisan support. So what does this mean? It essentially means that the government shutdown that would have went into effect at midnight on Friday night is now averted. The February 2nd deadline, funding deadline is now pushed back. The new funding deadlines are now going to be March 1st and March 8th. So the next step on Congress's plate is racing to avert a shutdown and fund the government by those two dates. Michael, how do you think uh, House Speaker Mike Johnson was able to sell this to his party? Well, look, only half of his conference actually supported this bill. 107 Republicans voted yes, 106 Republicans voted no, which is a really striking uh, breakdown of the Republican conference. And essentially what happened was a number of conservatives had expressed opposition to this continuing resolution, complaining that it continued, uh, that it you know, continued funding the government at current levels, that it included no spending cuts. It did not include any border policy provisions. Also, just typically speaking, hardline conservatives typically do not like continuing resolutions. But at the end of the day, the reason why this was able to get over the finish line was it could have significant support from Democrats, all Democrats, but two supported this continuing resolution, giving it over 300 votes, obviously more than enough to pass and, and get to President Biden's desk. Now, look, will there be consequences for Speaker Johnson? That remains to be seen. There was a last ditch effort by conservatives to try to insert border policy into this continuing resolution. Speaker Johnson ultimately rejected those Please, conservatives are not happy with the fact that this continuing resolution got over the finish line. So we're going to have to watch that hardliner and Speaker Johnson relationship in the weeks to come. Well, let's let's continue to talk about Speaker Johnson. Does this get any pressure off of him right now, or will that pressure come back once we get closer to that next deadline that you were talking about? Yeah, for now the pressure is off because there's not going to be a shutdown, Mark. Right? There, you know, there's a shutdown. The shutdown was averted for Friday. The shutdown will be now averted for February second. So for some time the pressure eases, but that expectation is that that is just going to ramp back up, as you mentioned, as we get up upon the March first and the March eighth deadlines. Also, uh, lawmakers are hoping that they won't need another continuing resolution come March. They're hoping that they'll be able that this buys them enough time to finish work on twelve appropriations bills. The full slate of appropriations bills and give them enough time to consider them on the floor and actually get them passed and signed into law. That is an enormous amount of work that still needs to be done. But look, lawmakers just bought themselves about 40 more days. So the expectation and the hope is that they'll be able to get it done in time. But look, the pressure, as I said, maybe it subsided a little bit right now because the immediate threat of a shutdown is over, but it could tick right back up as we get close to those March deadlines. Michael, you mentioned only two Democrats voted against the proposal. What does this mean for the, for the Democratic Party? Yeah, this was a victory for Democrats, right? Uh, and these are what Democratic leaders had said. Democrats said they did not want to see a government shutdown. There's no partial government shutdown because the CR passed. Democrats said they did not want to see any conservative policy riders in this continuing resolution. It was free of any of that. And conservatives said they didn't want to see any steep spending cuts. And this continuing resolution continued funding at current levels. So in all for all those reasons, that's why it garnered this strong support. As I said, as you mentioned, all Democrats but two were able to get behind it. So it's a success for them. And look, this was sort of an interesting factor you know, once again, with a must pass continuing resolution to avert a shutdown, more, you know, Democrats did the heavy lifting in terms of getting it over the finish line. We saw way more Democrats than Republicans support this. It goes to show that the majority, the government that, you know, House Republicans really are struggling with having this governing majority. Typically speaking, the majority party carries the carries most votes. 
when you're talking about must pass legislation or just any legislation in the body overall, Democrats a number of times have had to carry more of the votes, which is it's a pretty telling picture of the state of the Republican conference right now.